So fascism, it's one of those terms that has undergone thorough abuse. The term often manifests when the opportunity to humiliate political opponents is present. There are utterances of Islamo-fascism, liberal fascism, and a replete number of conservatives and nationalists have been diagnosed as fascists. Now, partly, this is because the term arouses the horror of World War II and the murderous regimes of Mussolini and Hitler. So, as a result, when one employs this term, it has tremendous moral force. And calling opponents fascists is akin to calling them evil, essentially. However, this arbitrary usage of the term reflects that it's pretty conceptually vague and quite challenging to define. So fascism began self-consciously as a specific movement in interwar Italy, but beyond this context, determining who meets the criteria of fascism and who does not is by no means a simple undertaking. But be that as it may, fascism does have certain identifiable themes that can be drawn out. So the historian Ian Kershaw said that trying to define fascism is akin to trying to nail jelly to the wall. If you nail jelly to the wall, it's gonna come falling down, it can't be done. So while fascism is complex and challenging to define, emerging themes such as anti-liberalism, anti-conservatism, anti-socialism, anti-rationalism, and pro-racism are very common. Roger Griffin, the contemporary scholar of fascism, promotes the notion of what he calls paleogenetic nationalism. Fascism understood as such presents the theme of a mythos of national rebirth and a revival period of sickness and decay after a revival period of sickness and decay. Fascism is, moreover, overtly totalitarian. Fascists seek an all-powerful state that aims to absorb the central activities of the nation, activities surrounding politics, economics, and culture. Though, or through the use of propaganda, rather, and policing power, the fascist state aims to extinguish the prospect of dissent. In addition, fascism functions on an intense cult of personality. So, fascist leaders often impart this godlike worship and their commands are obeyed unconditionally. So again, you can think of someone like Hitler, Stalin. Lastly, and this is very important, fascism is intensely militaristic. Its doctrine glorifies conquest, war, and violence. For fascism, wrote Mussolini, Everything is in a state and nothing human or spiritual exists, much less has value outside of the state. Let me get a simple word here real quick. So again, while there are emergent themes in fascism, arriving at a precise definition remains challenging. It's quite challenging to arrive at any kind of definition, uh, let alone precisify it to the point where everyone uses it properly. That's quite difficult to do, so that's why it's good to always define your terms as best as you can before you start employing such terms. What seems clear is that fascists often express a fervent preoccupation with rebirth and a glorification of the past. The state is very much alive to a fascist, bestowed with a spirit that functions as a psychological entity seeking to preserve and fulfill its end. Mussolini, for instance, spoke about the myth of the state as a spiritual integrity that once bound persons, but no longer does. Similarly, Hitler and his counterparts spoke about a cosmic life force, 
component and a renewal of the missing glory that had once defined Germany. So again, this kind of sickness, decay, rebirth, capturing something in the past that isn't presently there. So as with most things in the study of fascism, the German and Italian movements have supplied the primary evidence for interpretations of fascist ideas, a phenomenon that found its purest expression uh, in Italy and Germany. However, fascism may be defined striving toward an intellectually precise understanding of the term remains crucial. Because like I said, it's a term that's been thrown around to humiliate political opponents and people don't really reflect on what the term actually means or uh, you know, the historical context of the emergence of that term.